We're approaching that time of year when every personal trainer or health coach who's committed to a career in fitness needs a new fitness client process if they don't already have one. Or maybe yours could use an upgrade. And while you have just a few more weeks as I record this live to prepare it, that may be all you need. You need a system or a method. And you probably have one, but you may not have identified the step-by-step process that you use and actually put yourself to the task of putting that on paper or in a document and making sure that every one of those steps is actually working well for you. And you want to be sure that you are measuring whether it works or where clients might be falling off the bandwagon so you can improve it. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to the Voice for Fitness Professionals podcast, where I address marketing and sales strategies most often. And I'm also recently sharing, especially with those of you female trainers in the middle of your life, how you can become the better hormone balancing fitness expert and serve a community of women who is actually seeking solutions and not finding enough of them. But it's a noisy world out there now that we are all inevitably for the future online. So how do you get heard, seen, and be believed, be credible, be the authority? I can help you with that. We're launching, we're enrolling right now for the Flipping 50 Fitness Specialist 2.0. So it's not just the course, but we've launched a 10-month mastermind that follows the course that gives you the certificate and the templates to use all of our Flipping 50 materials. And that 10-month program actually will set you apart. How do you use social media wisely without it being such a time suck? Pardon my French. If you're interested, I will put the link in the show notes to just a few more webinars that are a part of letting you know what's involved, how you can be it, the go-to trainer for women in menopause seeking health solutions. And excuse me, it's morning. (laughs) I am 37 years officially as of January 1st of 2021 in the fitness business. At some point, halfway through my sophomore year in college, I declared no longer am I a graphic design major, hauling all of those portfolios and toolboxes back and forth and doing long labs. Instead, no, I am an exercise science major. So it's been 37 years now, and it's been 33 as a one-to-one trainer, because let me tell you that personal training really didn't exist when I first got started. And I've been that one-on-one trainer or health coach or juggling both those roles. I have definitely made my share of mistakes, but actually thanks to my ex-husband and friend back in 1992, I developed a process and I've used it over and over to describe how I work with clients, to start clients, and to continue with clients. So at every step of the way, from someone who's a prospect to becoming a lead, to a current client, to a prior client, or what that client actually needs next, you need a system that is very similar. But I'm here to give you the inside look at what it is that I do. So my first session with someone follows several steps. And let's face it, when we're talking about marketing and sales, those are the steps that have to happen to get someone here in the first place. And sometimes it'll surprise you what people will do. But my starting point is often a consultation with new fitness clients. And that's a part of my process. More and more with each book I published, media appearances, TEDx talk, keynote speeches, clients will actually apply to work with me without ever doing a consultation. I'll wake up in the morning and there it is, that several zeros behind a number indicating that I've got a new client. 
but still 50% of the time, I will consult with a customer who's not sure if we're a match or with questions about logistics and how it works. Even during this consultation, I'm sharing the steps of how I work with clients from beginning to next. We all like to know what to expect. So setting expectations should be a part of your coaching process. Next, following that enrollment, so consultation goes successfully and or the recommendation is that, yes, I can help and you should enroll and they do. Following that enrollment, there's a pre-first session homework for new clients. So they filled out all the pre-questionnaires, the history, the inclusive of health, fitness, hormones, and their awareness of all of those topics. So what I'm finding with my clients, as well as with some fitness trainers and health coaches, is we can't help them if we don't know what the hormone balancing exercise prescription is, or the hormone balancing ways of eating so very differently than clients who learned how to eat and exercise learned 30 or 40 years ago. So I'm checking all of those things in my first pre-first session homework. And that comes with a welcome letter that goes to them as soon as they enroll. My goal is to get that out within the next 12 hours. Everybody wants to know when they send you something, they are right there. They're ready. They want to start. So even though your first appointment may not be for several days or even a week, that first welcome letter, letting them know they made the best decision possible, needs to come right away. Often I'll put a video in that email that I send them, the acknowledgement, Even if I can't yet get them the welcome letter right away, maybe I'm traveling, maybe I am by phone and out of the office, but I can send a video letting them know how very excited I am and what to expect in the next 24 hours from me. Once they filled that out, those documents are turned into me. Homework is usually turned in, by the way, 24 or more hours before our first session. So we've already booked that. I've asked them to project when they'll have the homework back to me, and then let's book that session so we can save it. Because otherwise, you know, if this, for instance, I'm recording on a Tuesday morning at just about 1030 in the morning, My rest of the week is pretty well booked. So unless somebody is very, very flexible and they can fit into those small windows when I do have an opening, we're looking into the following week. And again, remember somebody's excited when they pull the trigger and they actually enroll, they want to start soon and you want them to start as soon as possible as well. So Having them turn in their homework, though, 24 or more hours before I meet with them guarantees I have time to go through and do my homework, and I start identifying an ideal lifestyle plan. That plan, however, is never the actual starting point. Literally, never. We're working with real-life humans here with a history of habits and preferences and a reality that has to be a part of this step-by-step change that we help them make. Just a couple resources that you may want to cover and read for yourself and maybe even share with the right client. One is called Tiny Habits, another Atomic Habits, The One Thing, and then Essentialism. And there are other books on habit changes, but these are some of my absolute favorites. And what you'll find is while you might start reading it for supporting your clients in behavior change, you may keep reading it or reread it and turn those pages down, highlight, underline because of how it helps you with business habits. My job after I've reviewed all their forms and formulated that here's an ideal. This is what I'd love to happen, but I know it won't. 
is identify questions for the first session. So I will generally pick one, two, or three different areas where I want to ask questions and or need to, to get all the data. If I don't see an obvious one thing to start with and ask if the client agrees, I'll ask them, which feels like a bigger pain point for them. So we're co-collaborating on the starting point. I never turn a client's world upside down or assign an arbitrary goal out of the blue. No longer should we be saying, oh, you don't have three to five cardio sessions on your schedule. We need to do that. Because depending on a woman, especially in midlife, her hormone balance and her status, that could actually spin her into the worst possible result, giving her the opposite of everything she probably is telling you that she wants. So we decide from where they are before we met what our starting point for deciding where to go next and for deciding which turn we're going to take. We do that together. I have a template that I use for those first sessions. In fact, for every session thereafter, and I use a checklist. I list the follow-up questions that I need to ask to collect all the data that I need. And those questions are both qualitative and quantitative. So I'm asking for numbers about certain things. I'm asking about certain activities that they may or may not be doing or aware of. And I'm asking for their feedback about them. So subjective and objective. The answers to those questions that I'll use to finalize the actual proposed plan for week one. In my mind, I've got a week two and a three and a four also plotted, but again, that's ideal. And we don't live in an ideal life or world. There's always a change to that plan based on the data and the feedback from week one. And when I say data, don't let that scare you. Anything you're tracking data points wise matters, but there's also that subjective and objective mix of things. So let's say you set for the client that they needed to strength train twice a week within that strength training session or those sessions, you've planned the exercises, the sets, the repetitions. And when you talk to the client again, maybe they did the sessions, but they didn't comply and it didn't quite go the way you had painted the picture. So you may have to dig into that. And week two has to be almost a a repeat to get them on the right page. So there's always going to be a reason to do a small pivot with a client because humans are human. All right. Let me also paint this picture because you may be wondering when you're going to work with a client and especially today, everybody's generally thinking, how do I do that? And you may automatically be going to, well, of course I use Zoom right? because we we talk about that like we talk about tissues for blowing our nose. That is Kleenex, right? For a lot of us. And here's the truth. It's not jumping on a Zoom automatically. So when you're going to meet with clients, I started in 1995. Zoom was not even probably born, right? But in 1995, I used a phone call to clients. We use a teleconference line where I can record the calls. You can still do that and you can do it for free up to a certain point. You get more perks if you're doing it and you want storage, for instance. And I needed that for a short time period. I don't any longer, so I still use or am back to using the free teleconference line. But I'm doing that because my volume of use on that is much lower. So I'm either using that or Skype or FaceTime for my international clients. And even though it's Skype and FaceTime, I don't often go on camera. It's just that that makes it international friendly. I've got clients in Trinidad, um, currently Australia, Italy, um, you know, UK, Canada, and 
you know, they all needed and wanted something different. So some preferred FaceTime, others Skype. And, you know, you just go with the flow, give people a couple of options. And generally, one of those will work for them. So Zoom may be an option, but let me tell you that um, showing my face, Skype, FaceTime, or Zoom is not necessarily a benefit. And it can be easier to communicate when you're not seeing each other. There's no judgment. There's no communication coming from that nonverbal. You hear things you ordinarily would not hear. As a coach, your skill sharpens, your communication skill sharpens. And I prefer it even today in 2020 to any other method of coaching. Voice only has much bigger benefits. So here's another tool set that you may want to look at. And these are all in the show notes, by the way. So if you want to come back to them and I'll link out to them. So number one, a way to follow up with clients is text. So between sessions, sometimes I will ask for accountability sake, after you finish that workout or that walk or something, text me, let me know you did it. And that's super helpful, especially when we're establishing a brand new habit. I will also use WhatsApp with certain clients who are a little bit more savvy. And then there's something called Voxer. So clients, and that's a paid service, clients can leave me a voice message and get the promise that I will respond within 24 hours. And that may be slightly different on the weekend or a holiday, but otherwise in general, they will get a personal voice message back. And that is a very private wait for them to send a question, but it's much more secure than say doing a voice message by text, which doesn't always work for everybody. So that's WhatsApp and Boxer. And you may be um, familiar with both or not. And I'll link again to the show notes. So what I want to focus on here is starting and ending your sessions systematically. So starting my session, I'm really careful to ditch the small talk and the, how are you? I've noticed that inevitably every new client does this and seriously catch your clients when they throw that back to you. So we start with, okay, how, how are you? How was your last week? And immediately the response to a nice girl will be, or from a nice girl will be, how are you? right? And yes, it's polite in its condition, but look, it's trite. And this is about them. So there's no way that I can answer that honestly or should, because it's not about me. They don't need to know really how I am because how I am at the moment is present for them and for no other reason. So I've got their session prep form in front of me when we talk, but I always ask, is there anything else you want to add to this list or is it complete? And I'll also ask, is there anything unusual coming up for you in the next week that I should know about? So as we talk, I can take that into account so that your next week's plan makes the most sense for you. You know, an instance of that might be um, traveling or I'm going to have my wisdom teeth out and or right things that will come up for them that you need to change their workout or change their nutrition or take certain things into account. If I ask the clients um, what they want to go through, ask them if they want to go through that list from top to bottom, or I also asked if there's a highest priority item that they want to start with instead. So on that prep form, they may have just written things down as they came to them, but not really put them in order. I give them a chance to do that. All of that is putting the client in charge. So listen, if you're a health coach or personal trainer, and you're doing a little bit more health coaching, we are co-collaborating here. It's not a dictatorship. My job is to wear two hats but it is not to make somebody codependent. It's to help them rely on their own judgment and take charge. It's more about that than taking responsibility. So yes, we want everybody to take responsibility, personal responsibility for their own health, but a client who reached out to you is already extremely responsible. 
They've asked for help. Very few people can actually do that. My view is that the client is an expert. Nobody knows them better than they know themselves. My expertise is in hormone balancing, fitness, kinesiology, movement, medical exercise, and behavior change that sticks. So now we have to do this together. I can absolutely provide these steps would all be appropriate as next steps when we're talking about fitness, exercise, reps, and sets, how to avoid issues with certain injury prone areas. And I can let them know that these would be good choices. Which do you want to choose and help guide them that way? But that then is where I'm asking what they want to do. That's the coaching piece of it. That's how you hold somebody accountable because they're more motivated when they choose it for themselves. All right. Now, the end of my session is also very systematic. One of the important things for you to do is both pad your sessions front and back, if you will, is And I learned this, by the way, the hard way. So when I would have, say, three clients in a row, and then I would have the day take off like a runaway train with other things and, you know, team members coming at me or emails in my inbox, things that had to get done and deadlines, getting back to send that homework and summarize the session and give the recordings to clients became really hard to do. It took so much longer because I was trying to remember, how did we wrap up? What was that? Where is that? So I leave 10 minutes minimum between sessions. And I'm also taking notes, literally keyboarding it right into their call transcript. And I don't do word for word. I do bullet points. We, uh, I will summarize for them what they need to do because I'm often also sending them, you know, here's your workout week. And that means here's what you're doing on Monday. Here's what you're doing on Tuesday, et cetera. So there are a lot of documents that have to come to them and that my homework was partially, partially done, but I can't do it without knowing the feedback. How did that feel? How did you feel after, right? In a lot of cases, whether that's food or sleep or exercise, So a couple of things for you to remember, I'm taking notes that way, but you actually may want to transcribe your phone calls or your Skypes, your FaceTime on something like otter.ia. And I'll link to that also in the show notes. And I have several blogs and podcasts where I've already put this as a fantastic tool, but you may have to go through. So you can't just take this transcript and send it right off to them. You're going to have to edit it, you know, because it, it, human error. Imagine auto text, right? And auto correct in their text message or social media messages. Yeah. Same is true with otter.ia, but it gets you there pretty closely. So if you're doing a 50 minute session, you want to transcribe that whole thing. It'll take a little time, but someone, potentially could be trained to do that for you. So the way I send homework, I will send the homework, the recordings, any additional resources to a client before I start anything else. Uh, That's part of the wrap up for their session. It's so much less time consuming done that way. And it is so much more spot on and relative to what we just finished talking about. A part of the session end for my new fitness client process is letting them know we have 10 more minutes in this session. It's a good time for me to ask, is there anything additionally that you want to make sure we talk about today? Or do you want to continue on the track that we're on right now? Because the last thing you want is for somebody two minutes or one minute before to say, oh, we didn't get to talk about this, that I really wanted to talk about that, right? So sometimes a conversation will take on, you know, a path of its own. And sometimes that's a good thing, but make sure that you are taking control of it and realizing, all right, this really wasn't in the prep form. Is it most important? Check in with them and ask and it's okay as long as they say, yes, I want to continue talking about this, or you can reroute really quickly. 
last but not least, there's one more thing I've mentioned or alluded to here, and I want to make sure I nail it on the head and get specific, and that is foreshadowing. So there's always a next step. So I want clients to know that even as I keep the steps small in the beginning, there will be bigger ones that I may believe that they're capable of even before they do. I'll plant seeds about their progress, their goals, and about our work together and what the next steps are. Even while we're in the middle of, say, a 90-day package or 12 weeks of sessions, we'll be talking about what happens next. And in week two or three, I'll be talking about here's where we'll probably be more likely at week seven or eight. And this is where we'll make sure we introduce that. And that also goes into my client logs. So I remember we've said that you want to make sure that you have the next step. What will your clients need or want next? If you can't keep a customer or client and keep them on track with life goals, you'll also jeopardize your business. Find a way to always be thinking, what's next for this client? What will they need? What should I create? How can I serve them in their next step? Often those options don't require that one-on-one attention, that getting started and staying on track do. That then provides a new opportunity for both them and for your business growth. So that is the sign of a business with longevity. When you no longer have to be delivering that one-on-one service, but there is somewhat of it either one-to-many or there is something that is even slightly more that a client can rely on themselves, do it at their convenience. So it is already there for them waiting based on the history that you've had with X number of clients that have proven to you, this is exactly what they need for continued success. Everyone's looking for continuity and there will be a point of maintenance. I'm not a big believer in maintenance being a plateau or a stopping point where we just hold because let's face it, if you continue to do the best workout in the world that someone would design for you today, and you're doing it again in six months or still in a year, it is no longer the best workout because the human body is so very intelligent and adapts. We've got to always be changing things up and we've got to always be responding to the changes because of our age, because of our circumstances, because of, for instance, a pandemic that brought about environmental circumstances we could have not predicted a year ago right now. But we will always need some step-by-step and some changes and pivots. So there is always going to be a reason for clients to seek you out. There you have it. That's just an insider peek at my systematic new fitness client process. I love it if you have questions or comments. And if you are not yet a personal trainer or a health coach, but you would love the idea of helping somebody you may want to attend the next masterclass that I'm doing for the Flipping 50 Fitness Specialist because a woman in midlife and beyond is actually exactly who women in midlife want to work with. And I'd love to see you there. You can find the links to all of the things that will help you with your coaching business in the show notes, and that'll be at fitnessmarketingmastery.com, new fitness client. What are you waiting for? Fitness clients need us more than ever.